Hello everyone, last week we talked about Pyramid Flow, which is an AI video model available to download open source. You can run it locally if you have high configuration hardware, or you can run it on your own private server. Now, these AI video models are able to run in ComfyUI. Right now we have a few ComfyUI custom nodes available, so we're going to try the ComfyUI Pyramid Flow wrapper. Now this one, and there's another one below, as you can see, is another custom node wrapper for Pyramid Flow, and both are workable as well. Try either one of them as you prefer, but in this video we're going to try out the Comfy UI wrapper nodes for Pyramid Flow. Now this is quite easy to install as you can see in Comfy UI Manager, just click install and restart. Your Comfy UI is ready to go and you have the requirements.txt which you need to do the pip install for before you restart your Comfy UI. So that's something you have to do manually. We've done a lot of examples on how to install the pip install for the required components, so I'm not going to go through that. And secondly, we're going to download the models from Hugging Face, and we have to store the files of these AI models in the models folder in ComfyUI. And we create a subfolder called Pyramid Flow, because this AI model is specifically trained with SD3. They named this AI model Pyramid Flow SD3 to make it easier to recognize this version of the AI model. So, what we need to do is just follow this path, create these folders, and store everything in the GitHub custom nodes folder. And we're going to save all the Hugging Face files for this AI model on this page. And basically that's it for installation. But of course, when you install the custom node wrapper, you're able to run the download pyramid flow models node. It can help you download that for the first time. But mostly, I don't like to use the auto download features from the custom nodes because there are a lot of files here, as you can see. Here's all the structure of these folders. Different model checkpoints for 0102, and the good thing is that they've updated the model files from bin files to safe tensors files, which allow us to run more user-friendly on consumer PC right now. So again, it requires pretty high VRAM to run this AI model. They set a minimum of about 12 GB RAM, but I suggest you have at least 20 GB RAM to run this smoothly. And I created a script, a Python script, to make it easier to auto-download all those files in one single folder path. You can use that manually, just two lines of code. Very easy, simple thing, nothing special, but I will put that for my Patreon supporters. If you guys are using the Comfy UI custom nodes to download, maybe it's working, and sometimes it's frozen, and you can try with the Python code here. It will show the progress in the terminal, which we're going to use VS Code to run this Python code. So basically, copy these names, just type Python and paste this name, and it will help you to download all the 29 files automatically like that. So this way is easier to see the progress of things that you download to your local drive, and it will help you to create a subfolder if you don't have any folder preferences. So by default, I just call that models folder and you have to do your configurations. What is the file's name, etc. For this download folder path, as is already created in here, the models subfolder, and it starts downloading all the model files into this subfolder. So I'm going to pause this one first because we don't need to download these models here. I have downloaded them already. As you can see, this is a very simple text to video flow, which is also available in the custom nodes example folder where you can go back to the GitHub project. You go to the subfolder examples and right here we got a few examples you can try out, which are text to video and image to video. And here's something new, I just saw that two days ago. That is text to video multi prompts examples. So pretty cool things. Keep getting some new updates about these AI models. But today we are going to try text to video and image to video. Those are two basic fundamental things for AI models to run and generate video results for us. So in here we got the models passing the pipeline of the models data to the sampler. And for this sampler, we are going to get the model data and the embedded prompt data, which is coming from the pyramid flow text encode text prompt. And just like the same as Flux, we don't need a negative prompt. That's not really important for the text clip. And after we finish up the sampling for the video, we will pass the model data and the sample latent data again to the VAE decoder for pyramid flow, which is in here. The last step was a video combine to show the video result right in the sampler as you can see, here's the first frame step, usually taking 20 steps in 2020. What it means is that it will go through three stages, I assume, and the second step video step is 10. And I have tried to set these numbers a little bit higher to 15, but it doesn't seem much different. 
The most difference that I see from the video generated result is the temp, which is the temperature of the AI, and the guidance scale and video guidance scale. And these numbers are going to affect a lot in the generated result. When you turn the video guidance scale to a lower number, it will be running more stable, but the motions will become less. So the lower the numbers, it will become more, you know, like a very general camera panning style and the object won't move a lot. Those kinds of video styles, basically, I can describe them in this way. And if you turn it up to four, five, and even six of the video guidance scale, it will allow the objects to have more movement. And that way is going to be taking some risks because this AI model is not really a fine-tuned version or a large parameter size AI model yet. So it will be getting a lot of morphing when you turn these numbers up and also the guidance scale as well. If you turn this up, it will not perform really well. So I will keep this low for like five to seven between this range and the video guidance scale. I will keep it as three to six in that range for the video generations. So how do I get these numbers by reference? I have tried the pyramid flow in the hugging face demo page that I did in the previous video. And those numbers are throughout the testing from here that I tried the guidance scale and the video guidance scale where the numbers from these settings you can see the maximum is 15 for both of these settings and just try it out with different settings. And what I came out for, my preference, was that I just mentioned those numbers of setting those ranges. It just happened in that way throughout my testing in there. And also, I test that in my notebook, the Jupyter Notebook, to try those values. So I keep that range in 7 in here mostly and 4 or 4.5. Just stay in the middle, let it run, and see how that performs. And if I want to have less morphing, then I may set the video guidance to even 3 or 2. But for the text to video, it won't do much better than the Kyber videos. It's very similar. I would say it's not going to be something that you look at on the demo page like this. I think this kind of quality is from what they enhance the videos. And I can show you guys some of my test output, which is something like this. The Japanese street, the winter video like that, which I get this text prompt from their demo page on here. So the Tokyo City Snowing Street, this text prompt is getting me this result. So that is the real generated result from this. And we can try out the other one. I also got another result like this one. Well, from a far shot to look at the landscape in this kind of style video, this model tends to perform pretty well. They have also downloaded this shot that actually I'm using this text prompt to generate. What I showed in the video demo is doing well for these landscape styles, but if we are getting some close shots or like the Sora text prompt like this, Tokyo woman walking on the street, it starts getting really bad results like this, like this AI video model doesn't know what it's doing for this text prompt, or yeah, it's not focusing or even generating the woman walking toward the camera, that kind of style. Instead, the woman from here is starting from this point and walking forward to the street and the whole style is just kind of a mess. And here is another demo, another generated result that I did using the snowing Tokyo City Street text prompt. But as you can see, the last frame from here, in which three people are walking weirdly and then there's snow stacked on top of their heads, looks like some weird thing going on, not really good in performance. And I can show you this example in which I'm getting the settings from here when I set the temperature to 16. And as you can see, I'm using this snowy Tokyo city text prompt. And let's generate this one again, as I have already generated the same result. So I don't need to save this output and try this one again. So the first time loading this model, it's gotta take a little while to load up everything in the download model, loader custom node, and the most consuming VRAM is going to be in the VAE decode. This part, when the data is loading here, will consume a lot of VRAM. Sometimes it goes up to 16 gigabytes of VRAM. It happens. So it is what it is, and you've got to be prepared if you want to run this locally on your machine. So here's the generated result. The same number, same settings, and almost generating the same result as what I did previously for testing the demos of this one. But then, you know, something changed. Not exactly the same, but as you can see, there are still three people stacking that snow on top of their heads and walking a little weird like in one line like that. I'm not really liking this part, but so far the building, everything looks quite good for a 2 billion parameter size model, such a small model that you can run locally and it just performs something this way. I cannot, no, we cannot expect it to be very beautiful, brilliant, like what we see in runway or something. But another example, 
what I did is the flooding scenes, and it comes out quite silly that some deformations on the building, or I don't know if this is the effect of the AI model, one of the tsunamis crushing in, and some building collapse that is coming from this text prompt. So we can try this one again and see. So replace the text prompts to here, and then we set the temperature by default to 10. So just setting it to 10 is good enough, and the guidance scale I lowered down a little. Just 5 is good enough for that. And make it to 4. Just make it balanced, not really aggressively high, and try this way. So with another seed number, we get another style. Like, this looks pretty nice this time. The tsunami coming and crushing all the buildings looks kind of coherent, or the building hasn't done much deformation, very similar to what we saw in this one. But of course, I assume they have some upscaling and some refinement for what they show in all these display demos. I cannot say we can fully trust this demo page, and especially this part. Like, not really that trustworthy for all the AI demo announcements right now, as what I see. But so far, this result has done pretty well. I will save that and put that in a folder. Also, I will share all my testing results to share this in a public folder, and maybe you guys can download that. It will include the metadata, so it will have all the settings and the workflow as well. And all you did is all you have to do is, for example, in here on my desktop, I got, you know, all these tested, generated results, and you can drag and drop all these files to Comfy UI. So, for example, I have this one generated like a landscape scene of Greek Santorini. Let's see this one, if they have, like, this one. I drag the workflow and the image on top of Comfy UI like this, and you will see all the settings and the text prompt in here, and you can just click, run, and try with whichever you prefer on the sampler settings that is going to influence most of the time of the generated result. And also another method, which is an image to video test. And I have tried a few of that using images as the initial frames. And for example, I have one scene of this one, and it is coming from one of my horror stories that I did on x.com just for fun and we can try to use the workflow that I did. And for this workflow, I have not only used by default the pyramid flow text to image or image to video workflow, but by default, the image to video workflow is just as simple as that. So basically, you load the image, resize the image, pass that to a VAE encode, and then using the image as the first frame of the video, put that into the input latent sample. So pass that to the sampler in VAE decode, and we got the video combined showing our generated result. But then, for the image to video, I did a little bit more, in which I added the STXL animate diff unsampler and sampling for this generated result. But again, I have some saved here because I have generated the other image as well. So for this image, I cannot produce something exactly like what I did in Runway ML, of course, as a lot of morphing, as you can see. But the AI does understand what I want to do by just using the image and text prompts over there to allow the two characters to walk in the hallway. But of course, this cannot be acceptable for the face. And the morphing of the two characters in the meantime is walking. The AI video cannot generate a coherent result for this kind of fast motion or lot of movement from the character. This AI model tends to not handle this. And the other result is this one, which I have. I'm using this image of a girl walking into a forest carrying a backpack, like a very nature style scene, and we can try this one again and tune that guidance down a little to have another style of generated result and see how that goes. So here's the result of what I did in image to video. Again, at the end last seconds here, as you can see, the side of the face starts morphing, which doesn't do real, actual human face. So that is kind of a drawback for that second moment. But overall, from the beginning to almost the end of this part, everything kind of looks pretty good. The backpack stays coherent, as does the character as well. And all the trees, and especially this part of the bush of the leaves, everything stays still in the same form. And I like the water stream is going one direction from here. So when we open up in here, as you can see from starting in the first seconds to the third seconds and even going to four seconds, we can see some water stream on the river kind of going in one direction. And it looks very coherent on that part as well. So, yeah, some landscape views are good for this AI model. I assume they haven't trained too much for the human characters, especially when they said they are using SD3 for data fine-tuned training. I assume that is not going to work very well for human characters. So that's something they might need to consider using other image models for the fine-tuning instead of using SD3 medium. Well, you guys can judge. So that's the way of image to video. And after that, as I've just mentioned, I use animate diff unsampling and resampling 
as I've mentioned, the similar technique in previous videos. And I have simplified the workflow here using three control networks or sometimes one to just make the whole video smoother. So, for example, we can try with these examples. We can enable all other custom node groups. And from here, we gather the output video for the input of this SDXL animate diff image frame input. And then we can start running that using the real viz XL checkpoint models. And then we'll see the result we have later. And this is the animate diff SDXL generated result. It still can't restore the face in the last seconds here, but at least we got sharpening overall everything from the original source image, or we can say the generated result from primary flow. So whichever one you prefer, the contrast is higher, of course. And yeah, so whichever one you prefer, use that. But then this is the basic workflow and how you can run this AI video model in Comfy UI. So again, very simple. VAE encode and text prompt sampler and VAE decode. And of course, we need to load the model. And that is basically the structure of creating AI video models in Comfy UI. So that's it for this video. And I will upload all the examples. AI video generated results. Maybe I will post on my website. You can check out this AI video model performance. Link will be posted in the video description later. So I will see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.